And now uh, we are moving on from showcases to a discussion panel. Finally, something a little bit more interactive, uh, which is closer to what uh, cafes are supposed to look like. Uh, so I will now uh, give the floor to um, representatives of uh, recipients of the so-called mini grants in parliament. Uh, we have four representatives from the Czech Republic, Iceland, Italy, and the UK, um, who we've asked to share their experience about being part of this project. Um, so if we could start alphabetically, um, could a representative from the Czech Republic please uh, start? I think that's Matyash. Yes, hello, thank you for the word. Uh, I will start from the very beginning. At the end of uh, 2011, we started to work on our parliamentary data. The main reason was that uh, no project aims to uh, have all parliamentary data and uh, continually add new, new transcription. Uh, we use TTOC, uh, Corpus Search and uh, Browse Tool at UFAL. So it suggested uh, itself to use TTOC for uh, providing our parliamentary data. But uh, the decision, uh, the design of uh, format has been, uh, sorry, but, uh, but by this, uh, by this decision, design, the design of uh, the format has been confirmed to TATOC. Using TATOC driven development attitude uh, didn't appear to be uh, very good because uh, it produced a format uh, that uh, hasn't been very, very universal. So, uh, Having this experience, we had been pleased that someone uh, came uh, with a with, with a much stricter format than TEI and Parla Clarin TEI, which both are universal. Still, uh, one phenomenon uh, can be stored in uh, many different ways, so uh, it can be challenging to process it. Parliament provide, uh, provided us uh, the direction in which our project should go. Uh, so we decided to apply for a co cooperation on uh, the Parliament project. Uh, the last reason uh, what motivated us, uh, our decision, uh, was that Tomáš Eriavec guaranteed uh, the quality of the project output. Uh, the main challenges, uh, the main challenging, uh, the main challenge in uh, completing the task was uh, data harvesting, because uh, the Czech Parliament web pages form are not uniform, so we have to implement many checks and uh, various patches. There are wrong dates and uh, some hypertext links are missing. So uh, the script is generating or guessing the following, following uh, page link. Another issue is uh, assigning uh, the speaker to the right person. Each speech is introduced with, is, uh, with a, a speaker name and uh, usually contain, contains a hypertext link to the personal web page. Unfortunately, uh, the government mem members have multiple web pages or are not listed on the pages of the Chamber of Deputies. Uh, we merge those multiple profiles into a single person based on name and birth date. Uh, the second minor task appeared in uh, linguistics annotations. 
it appeared that uh, our tools, UDPipe and Nametech, contains bugs. But uh, thanks to Tomáš's careful validation procedure, we uh, identify those bugs, patch them in our data, and report them uh, to the authors of UDPipe and Nametech. From today's perspective, uh, we should do more validation during processing data in our pipeline. Uh, it would be easier to identify uh, problems and uh, running, uh, then running uh, the whole pipeline and uh, in the end discover that uh, there is some mess. Another thing that I am not 100% uh, sure whether I should be too pushy uh, with propagating check name entities into parliament data. Check name entities contains multiple types that for basic ones and uh, they are they allow nesting. So finally, it produces troubles in uh, data conversion and validation. Uh, to conclude my, my part, I would like to thank Tomáš for his excellent work and help with our data. That's all from my side. Thank you. Thanks a lot. That was a brilliant um, example of a, of a synergy between uh, national work on national projects and uh, collaboration um, at the clearing level. Uh, let's now move on to Iceland. Yeah, my name is Stavka yes. Barkason, so I'm a project manager at the Arne Magnusson Institute for Icelandic Studies. And I worked on the Icelandic part as, along with my co-worker Steinthor Stengrinsson. Now, when we heard about this parliament project from Eirikur Ragvalsson, Clarence National Coordinator in Iceland, we had already published a corpus of parliamentary speeches in Iceland, where we had followed the parliament clarin recommendations. And apart from the obvious reason that it's always useful to be a part of a bigger international project, we assumed that it would be easy for us to adapt our previous corpus to the parliament format. But there we were awfully wrong. Now, uh, firstly, we had to retrieve all the data from Althingi's website. And unfortunately, there were many, well, some gaps, errors and inconsistencies that we had to react to. Uh, for example, the format of the page, the HTML page is not always the same and the classes and IDs of the HTML tags are not used in any usual way to make the life easier for someone who wants to scrape information from the pages. Uh, a web page where we expected to find maybe a speech might not include any text. Information about NPs might be inconsistent or missing. Abbreviations used in text to indicate interruptions to a speech, shouting or some incidents and NPs names would also be inconsistent. Uh, so there was quite a bit of coding and recoding and investi investigation to do to get around those inconsistencies and gaps. Now, a lot of the work of retrieving the data had already been done during the compilation of our previous corpus, but there was more metadata included in Parliament that in our previous corpus. And we had not included the interruptions and they actually caused us quite a bit of problems when it came to the compilation by creating the TA files. In general, the compilation of the TA files was not so problematic, apart from mainly these uh, interruptions that had to be treated differently than the rest of the text. An interruption might occur in the middle of a sentence, a speaker was speaking and someone shouted. And uh, there was some workaround to do to tokenize, tag and lemmatize the sentence as a whole then insert the interruption again. But the biggest challenge was, of course, to satisfy Thomas. He would scrupulously and repeatedly validate our files and send us comments that we had to react to. This made the Parliament project a great headache, but mainly a great school to go through. Even though I've been working with the TA format for a while, I've always felt a bit of loss, not sure about the right way around different problems. But during the Parliament project, we were given a strict structure to adhere to, uh, tools to use, and a great teacher to direct us the right way. 
Uh, now I've used what I've learned during the parliament project and the tools Thomas recommended to us to reconstruct and amend the Icelandic Gigawar Corpus, a rather ambitious project that we have been carrying on uh, by the Arne Magnusson Institute uh, for a while and will be continued. Now, if I had to redo the parliament corpus from scratch, I might consider trying to get the data directly from Althingi rather than scrape it from the website, even though I guess I would run into similar problems of gaps and inconsistencies. So yeah, that's it. And I just thank you for the time. Thanks a lot for your valuable experience. Uh, I hope the exercise wasn't too uh, painful uh, in the end and uh, it was a worthwhile effort. Uh, this is a nice example, in my opinion, of uh, an e existing corpus being brought closer uh, to uh, many other parliamentary corpora and it has a nice spillover effect that you will uh, actually um, um, used for other types of corpora, like the reference corpus, which I also think um, is uh, strategically a very important uh, outcome of the parliament collaboration. Um, moving on, I think we're now uh, at Italy. Um, who is going to represent Italy? Um, myself, Giulia Venturi from the- Hello, Giulia, the floor Hi. is yours. Hi, thank you. Um, yes, from, from our side, uh, we can say that uh, we, we were glad to participate uh, to, to this uh, initiative um, because uh, we, have, uh, uh, we had the opportunity to continue uh, quite a long-standing uh, collaboration with uh, uh, different uh, uh, Italian institutions, uh, in particular with the Senate and uh, from uh, different uh, perspectives uh, since uh, um, because our uh, team is composed of uh, uh, people um, working in two main uh, institutes um, i'm part of the sub team working at the institute for computational linguistics and uh, we have uh, a tradition in uh, developing and adapting uh, linguistic annotation pipelines to different varieties uh, of language, different varieties of language, and uh, the um, uh, institutional speech, of course, is one, uh, one of them. And uh, other people, uh, in particular uh, Tommaso Agnoloni, comes uh, from uh, a different uh, institute, um, mostly focused on the um, analysis uh, uh, of, uh, of legal uh, corpora or institutional uh, corpora. So we, we were glad to, to continue this, uh, let's say, uh, tradition uh, also to collaborate uh, uh, with, um, uh, with these uh, two uh, institutes. So uh, moving to the main challenges uh, we, we have uh, uh, dealt with, um, um, one of the uh, main one um, concerns the, the conversion of the uh, original uh, format of the debates uh, into the um, uh, target uh, format uh, since uh, we, um, we have uh, uh, the debates uh, in the HTML format, but uh, the, the format is uh, quite uh, uh it's not always uh, consistent and uh, so we uh, we needed to, to develop a number of uh, transformations in order to be uh, compliant with the, with the format and also we have uh, concerning the annotation of the uh, metadata we have uh, some uh, problems uh, since uh, we can automatically uh, add uh, the uh, metadata included in the open portal of the uh, Senate, of the Italian Senate, but uh, during the uh, sessions, um, other people uh, not uh, registered in this uh, portal can, uh, can speak. And so we have uh, we, we had to manually add the metadata of all speakers uh, to 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 the, to the list of uh, metadata, and um, 
Mm, so this uh, uh, was concerning the annotation of the um, uh, of the format uh, and of the metadata and concerning the the linguistic annotation uh, we we used the the, um, uh, the, the models uh, available for the Italian language and the UD format so we, we use the standard uh, uh, annotation uh, pipeline but we uh, we needed to use uh, a non UD um, NER uh, uh, tool uh, since uh, mm, uh, there, uh, there aren't uh, reliable uh, models available for, uh, for the Italian NER. So we, we have uh, some uh, troubles to, to, to align the different uh, annotation, uh, different annotation uh, schema. Um, so what we learned, uh, we, we think that uh, um, in the future, um, concerning the, uh, the standard, uh, it could be uh, useful uh, to, to use uh, um, a unique, uh, more standard source uh, format to, uh, to use as a, uh, as a starting point to be converted into the target uh, uh, parliament uh, uh, TAI format. And uh, uh, since uh, mm, uh, the Italian uh, um, parliament, uh, we, or at least for the Italian Senate, uh, we have uh, uh, from starting uh, since uh, 2018, we have all the debates uh, um, encoded in the Accomantoso format, uh, which is uh, 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 more consistent than, than the HTML format uh, from which uh, we, we started this time. Um, it can be uh, useful and uh, it make it easier to optimize the, the, full, uh, the full conversion. And concerning the, the linguistic uh, annotation, we are working on validate the quality of the uh, resulting uh, uh, annotations, uh, since uh, we are aware that uh, this language variety is uh, quite different uh, from the training of the available uh, pipeline. And so we, we are currently uh, validating creating a small uh, gold uh, uh, data set of linguistically annotated uh, uh, debates uh, in order, yes, to, to check the, the quality, as I said, and also in, in the future to, to adapt uh, a pipeline to, to, uh, to process uh, more accurately this kind of, uh, of data, which is uh, uh, of interest. And, um, and since uh, we are relying on uh, uh, the UD format, which is a standard universal format, uh, we think that maybe uh, some specific uh, annotation, annotation choices maybe we, uh, can be shared among all the uh, other um, countries and uh, in order to, to build uh, resources, uh, resources uh, uh, linguistically annotated uh, uh, according to this um, universal uh, format. And um, I think that uh, that's it from our side. Thanks a lot, Julia. Uh, and last but not least, uh, we have uh, an example uh, from the UK. Uh, is it Matthew or Paul who's going to? It's Paul, hi. Hello, hi. Hi, thanks. Um, so yeah, hi everybody. Um, and just to say thanks at this point to Claren and Parliament for the funding. Um, so yeah, the uh, work mainly here was done by Matt um, and uh, really that was one of the main motivations um, for getting involved here. Matt's PhD, uh, as you can see there, um, was on novel database design, um, but one of his case studies in his PhD was um, storing the UK Hansard in his database uh, and evaluating the speed and uh, flexibility of that. Uh, the other thing that we'd done previously, as you can see there, the Samuels project in 2014, 2015, um, was a project involving Lancaster, Glasgow, um, Huddersfield, and well, UCLan at the time, but Dawn Archer's now moved to MMU. And in that project, we took 200 years of 
uh, the what we call the historic AMSOD and ran that through a new processing pipeline that we built. <clears throat> so we really wanted to, since that project extend the Hansard corpus up to the modern day and Matt started to do that at the end of his PhD to download uh, the new UK Hansard releases every night and run them through a pipeline. Um, also uh, personally we want, I wanted to re-engage with uh, Claren as a project uh, which I've been involved in uh, a few years ago in the development phase and also uh, obviously re-engage in European projects uh, after the B word, which I won't mention. Um, but also, you know, it's really interesting uh, and a kind of, uh, you know, fascinating project to create this uh, very large scale comparable uh, multilingual corpus. So it was really, uh, you know, a good aim to get involved in that. So in terms of um, main challenges, well, we were pretty well served in the UK by uh, the two APIs for downloading the data and the metadata. Um, one of the things we didn't uh, have access to in the original Samuel's work was some of the metadata about the MPs. Um, there was some other projects ongoing in parallel at the time to uh, work back historically. Um, but now there's a lot of uh, metadata you can get for the parliamentary open data API. We can burn, uh, combine that with the Hansard API for downloading the data. Um, originally, we wanted to try and do two parallel tool chains, one with the Stanford Core NLP map to UD, but also uh, the UQL pipeline with clause and the semantic tagger, but it's proved a little bit tricky, especially with tokenization, which I can confirm is not a solved problem. Um, so we had to we had to create a new pipeline tool. Um, and to, to roll that and uh, pull in all the different metadata, combine that with the extra stuff that we wanted to include, you know, uh, standardizing the names of uh, MPs, uh, including their party, photo where available, and uh, social media information, if that was available. Um, in terms of lessons learned, uh, well, kind of metadata extraction, conversion of an encoding is fun in quotes, and we learned a lot about doing that. Obviously, it's really super important that um, this is consistent within just the, not just the UK corpus, but across all of the corpora. Um, so really important to get that right. So we, and mostly Matt, well, in fact, all of Matt, um, having to rerun the processing pipeline a number of times to make sure that the formatting of that was consistent um, with lots of help from uh, Tomash. So thanks very much to Tomash for that. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it was three, four months work for Matt. Um, I don't think we could have managed without, you know, the previous expertise of doing this within the group um, in terms of the processing pipeline, but also dealing with the Hansard data uh, and having expertise in XSLT uh, really helped um, to pick this up pretty quickly, and download all of that data, combine it with the metadata uh, and deliver it through the pipeline in the suitable format. Um, so yes, overall, I can say it was definitely fun. Thanks very much for having uh, the UK as part of Parliament. Okay, that's it for me. Thanks a lot. I, I find it really exciting that Parliament has uh, included so many uh, students at the doctoral and master's level, both in terms of formal uh, education, but also uh, inform or informal in the form of the DH Hackathon. Uh, which I, I think this is brilliant that we're supporting uh, a new generation of researchers also through ongoing work like Parliament. Okay, that's it in terms of uh, guest speakers. We have now reached the Q&A uh, part of the session. So please uh, type in the questions or comments uh, in chat and we'll make sure to go through them uh, in the uh, few minutes that we have uh, left still. But uh, while we are waiting for the uh, questions to come in via chat, um, could I ask uh, the, uh, David for the next slide, please? I want to just uh, point you to uh, more resources if you're interested. Um, as uh, already announced before, 
we have uh, recorded videos of um, three showcases. Uh, one is by Ruben, the other one is by B Miguel, and the third one is Philip. So if you'd like uh, to hear more about their work, you can check out their uh, recordings. Uh, and Ruben has also published a full report uh, of his research on his GitHub repository. Uh, the links are published on the Parliament website as well as the Parliament uh, um, Clarin Cafe uh, page. Uh, in addition to that, for anyone who's interested in uh, using parliamentary corpora in either the research or teaching, we have uh, developed a tutorial for parliamentary data uh, and corpus concordancers. Uh, it's called Voices of the Parliament, and this is the uh, official launch of the tutorial uh, as we speak. Uh, this particular tutorial has not been developed on parliament data, but on a previous uh, corpus. But basically it's uh, done on the same concordancer and uh, can be reapplied for uh, all the parliament data in all the national contexts. So feel free to take a look at both the showcases and the tutorial. Now uh, I'm seeing uh, questions already in chat. Um, is there any plan to try and engage with political scientists and others who might want to study the data? It looks like an excellent opportunity to engage with users. Uh, and I will just tie this to the next question from Paul. What's next? Extending to more languages, longer time periods, and or more annotation. So I would give the floor to the uh, parliament uh, uh, project coordinators and to Tomasz, whoever wants to uh, answer these two questions, which I think are closely related, can take the floor. Thank you. Yeah, so who's going to answer? Uh... I can uh, tell you about uh, our plans. So we are planning uh, to uh, apply for some funding for extension of parliament. And we are now drafting the proposal and uh, we already know we'll be showing it to uh, all interested parties. And in principle, it has two, um, uh, two, two most important tasks. One, and they are quite obvious. So uh, to get more languages, and uh, to update uh, what we already have. And the updates can be uh, can go in various ways. So uh, we would like to update uh, both the metadata, we can think about updating the uh, structure of uh, the session, for example. Uh, two hours ago, uh, we had a defense of um, the master's thesis of uh, Miguel uh, Peters. And uh, uh, there, there were the same questions were asked, yes, uh, or um, uh, Miguel was uh, complaining that we don't have enough metadata, so we plan to have it. Uh, and of course, we uh, would like to um, extend the corpora because they end at some point in, in 2020, yes, and now we have 2021. Uh, if we start the project, it's going to be 2022, so it's it would be good to have a pipeline to, that feeds the new data to, uh, to to our infrastructure, as I call it, because Parliament is is not a project; it's it's more than a project, I would say. Uh, and so, yes, and so uh, going back to the first question, uh, it, it's also related to the cost action proposal that we had and uh, we failed with, uh, because it was uh, mostly NLP oriented. So uh, the showcases. Uh, they are both planned in Parliament 2, the code name for the extension, and uh, probably also for the cost action, which we uh, want to apply for, for the next time, but uh, we need to change the perspective. So it's users, it's digital humanities, showcases, demonstration, all such things. Analytic stuff is much more important than the NLP boring stuff that we are proficient with. Uh, Petia, Tomasz, Dagia, if you would like to comment, uh, please do, because I'm talking too much. I would, thank you. I would just like to extend the first question with uh, what's next with uh, Tobias's question uh, to make historians happy. Uh, he was wondering if the projects could also be extended not with 20, uh, 2021 and 22 data, but uh, with historical data. So maybe Petya and Tomasz could uh, shed light on 
what you are planning for within Parliament next uh, for historians? No, uh, maybe I can answer this. Yeah. Uh, so we haven't actually planned to extend it in the past because it's kind of more uh, appealing, yeah, to extend it into now so that people don't say, okay, I don't want to look at this data because it's not current anymore. And the COVID is kind of still ongoing. Uh, so yeah, if you're interested in COVID, it's much better to extend it uh, to the future or whatever, to, to today's uh, date. Uh, on the other hand, yes, it would be really nice to extend it back uh, as well. And I think we should add this to our proposal. Um, I mean, we have nothing against it going further into the past, except it very much depends on what the partners have uh, on the web. So do they have uh, Parliament's uh, digital uh, on the web available to scrape uh, beyond or before 2015? This, I guess, remains to be seen but we definitely could ask them to, to do that if possible. It would be interesting. Thanks a lot. And now I see that uh, we are almost out of, uh, exactly out of time. So maybe we can proceed with closing and somebody can reply to Paul's question in chat directly. Um, I would just like uh, to invite all the newcomers to get involved in Clarin. We're, uh, very uh, friendly network uh, as you could see from today's input from so many partners you can uh, join our news flash you can uh, keep track of the events that we're organizing and uh, take a look at the open calls that we uh, currently have uh, and uh, try and submit a proposal you can also follow us and interact with us, us on twitter as well as um, we uh, also invite uh, you to all the upcoming uh, cafes that are published on the website. Uh, and this is the final slide that I would like David to present. Uh, so see you at the next cafe, which is not going to be very soon because we're coming back in September. But before we will be taking a break, hopefully in uh, having some clarin cafe moments in some nicer settings uh, if you have any inspiration you can share uh, your summer cafe moments with us via twitter uh, but definitely stay tuned for the fall edition of the clarin cafe uh, that will take place uh, in uh, parallel with the clarin annual conference so it will be a big busy event in september and we're already looking forward to that uh, with this, I would like to say goodbye from Ljubljana. It's very hot, as you can see from my dress, and I'm logging out with a uh, goodbye. Mm -hmm.